Hi, my name is David Kloiber. I'm the council member for the 6th District. And today on this bright day, we are out here at the construction site for the Brighton, Ra Brighton Trail Rail Bridge. Um, here to ask a few questions and see what we can learn about uh, the construction and what we can expect. So here with me, I have uh, the director, if he'd like to introduce himself. Uh, Doug Burton. Doug Burton, and what would you say your affiliation with this project is? So I'm the director of engineering, so I oversee all the uh, capital construction projects that are surface and oriented, such as bridges, roads, trails uh, in Lexington. Okay, and why don't you just give us a, a brief history of what, uh, what this rail trail is all about? So the, the, a lot of the rails were starting to be abandoned in the 60s and, and were abandoned all through up to the 80s. Uh, and that got advocacy groups like the Kentucky Rail Trails Conservancy to, to start looking at how can, we, how can we use these. And so that was formed uh, in the 90s. Uh, and then in the early 2000s, they started working with the state and local leadership to figure out how can we get funding and, and make, this, uh, make, these tra make these trails a, uh, a real thing. So in the early 2000s, there were several studies done to figure out how to make that happen. And then the funding followed. So in uh, 2007, we were able to construct the two miles that are just north of here or just east of here. Um, and then uh, just two years ago, we, we constructed the segment that's just uh, to the west. And so now here we are uh, this year making that connection so that we can have uh, over three miles of continuous trail uh, here in Lexington. So where exactly does this connect? So it starts uh, kind of behind Liberty School uh, just up the street uh, and connects to multiple neighborhoods there. Uh, works its way uh, parallel to Liberty. Obviously it's going to cross here with our new bridge and we'll go all the way out to uh, Walnut Grove uh, just off of uh, just off of uh, Polo Club. So. And it's impressive coming up over uh, Man of War there but you might ask yourself, you know, how do I get onto this trail if I was just uh, out here on Man of War? So what's the best place for people to actually gain access to this, uh, this particular bridge? So there's a couple different spots. Uh, there's several connections along uh, neighborhood streets that have, have parking, uh, but uh, Pleasant Ridge Park is probably your best bet because that kind of gets you in the middle and allows you to go one way or go the other. Uh, you can also park at the uh, Eastern Terminus, which is the Deer Haven Park. Um, and again, there's several connections to neighborhoods along the way that al allow you even though the folks who live in that neighborhood, but uh, any person in the public to, to hop on the trail right there. Well, you, you did mention the, uh, the park down the way. What, it, what other kind of amenities do they have along this, uh, this trail here that's going to so, be connected? So Pleasant Ridge Park is probably the one that has most amenities. There's the dog parks, there's, uh, there's playgrounds, there's water fountains, there's benches. So that's a good hub uh, for a lot of the trail users to start from or stop at on the way. Oh, cool. And, and you might have mentioned it before. I'm sorry if I missed it. The total amount of connected trail that this bridge is going to be bringing together? Just over three miles. Just over three miles. That's, that's pretty nice. Um, so in the future, are you guys thinking of making any additional um, additions, I guess, to this bridge? So not to the bridge, but the trail itself, we're always looking to expand because our big, uh, our, the point of all these trails is connectivity. You know, we've got Legacy Trail and we're going to have Town Branch Commons and Town Branch Trail connecting into downtown soon and we'll eventually bring bringing those all the way out to connect these. Uh, there's a, we'll be putting on the street a design for a project to uh, redo Liberty Road uh, inside New Circle. KYTC already has a project uh, going that will do the same and we're going to fight for a shared use path through all those segments so that eventually you'll be able to get all the way from Horse Park to downtown all the way out to Deer Haven. So if I was to ask you, kind of what, it, what is the impact of, of a bridge like this on our, our city at large? It's, it's that connectivity? It's that connectivity, because that connectivity makes it not just a recreational trail, it makes it a transportation system. So if you want to make a short grocery run, why get in your car when you can hop on your bike and, and rent, ride the bike trail to the grocery or ride the bike trail to work? Uh, so that connectivity is huge. And it's not just huge for the local community, but it's huge for the region because then that rail trail becomes a attraction for people outside of our community. It becomes uh, tourism, cycle tourism. So they come here to see the be beautiful bluegrass. So. Well, thank you for answering the questions, uh, Director. It's uh, definitely great to get out here and talk with you. Um, here in a minute, I'm going to bring out uh, my next guest, and we're going to have a few questions about the actual construction and what we can expect uh, you know, for that to be completed. So hold on just a second. All right, and now we're back with my next guest. This is the project manager for the construction, Andrew Grunwald. He's gonna answer a few questions and I'll just start with the, the first and most important one. When's this whole thing gonna get, uh, get it finished up? Well, we're, we're hoping to complete uh, probably about mid-summer, uh, July, August. Um, 
it'd be wonderful if we could do it a little bit faster, but that's our target date. I know that weather can always be uh, an issue there, especially what we experienced a couple weeks ago. Uh, weather and COVID. Uh, COVID has really played a significant part in our schedule. So. And that's, that's hitting everybody about the, about the same there. Um, so while we're getting through with this construction, and again, we can see all the work you've done in such a, such a short period of time, what, what kind of impacts can uh, people around here expect from the rest of this construction period? Well, uh, primarily we'll have some more, another Im major impact on Man of War, but we'll, uh, we'll try to confine it to the uh, same uh, process we had last time. We'll, we'll do it at night. We're gonna have to shut the whole road down when we pour the deck. Um, and that'll probably happen at the end of March, beginning of April. We haven't actually set that date. Uh, that depends on how construction goes in the next couple of weeks. Um, other impacts will be just small impacts, uh, a little bit of traffic blocks here, there, when we move equipment around. Um, but nothing major. So hopefully only one more, one more closure. One more closure. So, so you mentioned it. I know that's the one everyone's interested in is the road closure. So we think there's going to be one more road closure if everything goes well on Man of War, hopefully in the evening or? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make the contractor do it in the evening. Yeah, we won't have it done during the day. Okay. So. Well, thank you. That's always more considerate uh, yeah. when that happens that way. So. In a project like this, there's always a ton of little stumbling blocks. What, what would you say was, was or is the most challenging aspect of a project like this? Um, for any bridge, of course, the most challenging, you know, is, is the foundation and setting the beams themselves. For this one, the foundation and around the KU substation, we had a tremendous amount of relocations for the utilities. Uh, get them out of the way. Then once the foundation came up, then of course it was setting the beams. Um, once those two are out of the way, uh, you know, our hope is just smooth sailing and all the major stuff all right. that can go wrong is done. So you're saying the hardest part is behind you? Yes. All right, we're going to cross our fingers us. on that one always, right? It is, oh, yeah. it is still construction. It is still construction. Um, well, Andrew, thank you so much for coming out and taking some time and, and telling us about this bridge. I'm sure that everyone is going to uh, appreciate when this is done and this is an amenity that will last for a very long time. So thank you again for working so hard on it and for answering our questions. And if you have any other questions about uh, timelines or anything dealing with the bridge at all, feel free to reach out to my office. Uh, we are willing to answer your questions at any time. And this is gonna be, this is gonna be an amazing, amazing addition to our district and we're really excited to have it.